ChatGPT has 400 million weekly active users. And my question is, how does a small directory publisher like me actually game this so that I can get more clicks, more visits, and ultimately stay as relevant as possible? I think there is a crossover with what ranks on Google well and what shows up as a source on ChatGPT, but there's obviously some kind of disconnect and I'm trying to figure out how this actually works to the best of my ability so I can keep this in mind when I'm building out my own directory websites. I'm wondering if it's just the same things that get you ranked on Google, so backlinks, user engagement signals, maybe some user generated content, but I wonder if the ranking priority is different and how it differs in general. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today and I'm gonna be looking at small directory websites because Ultimately, the answer is whether or not small guys like us are going to ever be sourced and get clicks from people using ChatGPT. Real quick, if you want to join a community of like-minded directory builders, the free Ship Your Directory community has over 1,600 people in it who are on the journey to build their own directory websites. So I'll leave a link down below in the description for that. So the first place I'm going to go to enhance my understanding of LLM SEO or LEO is straight to the source. We're going to ask ChatGPT and figure out if we can understand the nuances of what is being pulled as far as data and sources go. Now, before I did this, I went ahead and went to the settings in my ChatGPT account and switched off the memory toggle, which means that it won't be picking up previous conversations and contexts, and there won't be any biases when it's referencing any websites. Okay, so based on the answer, it says that ChatGPT doesn't crawl or index like Google. We knew that already. It says that a directory needs to be indexed by Google or Bing. I think this was a theory that a lot of people had, which is that if you just rank on Bing, then you will be showing up on ChatGPT, but I don't think it's that simple. How to get your directory into ChatGPT results. So here is the reverse engineering angle. SEO, of course, schema and structured data, make data crawlable and easy to parse. I think I knew a lot of this already. Now I wanna run a test with one of the small directory websites that I found in a previous video. And I wanna see if it shows up if I type a query with a keyword that this directory is ranking on the top page of Google for. So this is Soak Oregon and it's a directory that I've broken down and analyzed in a previous video. And it's a pretty niche directory around all the hot springs in Oregon. And if we look at the Ahrefs data, we can see it's still getting a good amount of traffic here. And it's ranking on the first page for a lot of these keywords like Oregon hot springs. We even have specific hot springs where it's ranked number two. So it is doing pretty well in its own area of the internet. So I'm trying to figure out if ChatGPT will reference this directory whenever I take a main keyword like Oregon Hot Springs, and I ask one of the most commonly searched questions around this specific keyword. And one way we can find these questions is just by clicking on Oregon Hot Springs, which takes us to the Keyword Explorer and shows us all this data. And then I'll just go over to the questions. And the most searched question is, are there hot springs in Oregon? So I'm just gonna see if we take this and we head over to ChatGPT. So I just copied and pasted it to ChatGPT and I just wanna see what it says here. Okay, so this is interesting. It's referenced this pretty big website, Axios. I feel like I've heard of that website. If we click on it, we can see the page that it referenced. And it looks like it just referenced this information here. It's also referencing top hot springs, the Oregon hot springs list and map. So I'm curious what that is. Okay, so this looks like a competitor hot spring directory to Soak Oregon over here. And it looks like it referenced the location page here because we can see a bunch of different listings. It's referenced for Bagby hot springs. So here's the Ahrefs data for this page right here. And it's not that impressive. I mean, there's nine monthly visitors, five backlinks and 122 keywords. Domain rating is 29. Let's just take a look at these backlinks. So this is a good backlink, 431 visitors and pretty high DR for this backlink. But other than that, there's not a lot going on. So that's kind of interesting that it would choose that. Maybe it's the case that Bagby Hot Springs is not mentioned by Soak Oregon. So Soak Oregon does have their own dedicated listing page for Bagby Hot Springs. And after looking at the two, there's not a lot of things that are different. And I would say Soak Oregon's page is much better in a lot of ways. This has, you know, basically text and photos, and that's pretty much it, a little map embed. And then Soak Oregon has a lot more text. They have plenty of photos, a map embed. They even have a video here. It's not from their YouTube channel, but they do have a video embed, as well as some user-generated content. If we scroll all the way down, we can see some from 2020. So overall, I would say that this is a better page. Yeah, ChatGPT decided to reference Bagby Hot Springs for this example here, and it was the location page. So it's kind of interesting that the referenced information isn't even on the page 
that it's referencing, if that makes sense. Now, with that said, we do see Silk, Oregon referenced here under the Alverd Hot Springs. We also see Vogue, why you should land in Portland and then visit Central and Northeast Oregon instead. What, does this have Hot Springs? So this Vogue article that's referenced is not even containing the word Hot Springs. Oh, okay, so maybe it's this part. Notes, remote location offers solitude and stargazing opportunities. So maybe stargazing? Okay, so stargazer is mentioned, but it doesn't have to do with Hot Springs. So that is really weird. Reddit, of course, where's the good? natural hot springs to visit in the r slash Oregon subreddit. Yeah, I don't think this is a big surprise. This is for Alvord Hot Springs and we can see that Alvord is mentioned eight times on this page. So here we see top hot springs mentioned again down on this list. So I'm kind of curious if we just look at the website as a whole, what is the difference here? So let's do a side-by-side -side comparison real quick through Ahrefs data on Top Hot Springs and Silk, Oregon. Top Hot Springs has 5,300 monthly visitors, 11,000 keywords, and 1.3K backlinks, and a DR29. Whereas Silk, Oregon has 12,000 monthly visitors, 1.4K keywords, 3.4K backlinks, and a 35 domain rating. So looking at this, it's obvious that Silk, Oregon has the lead, but let's just take a look at their top pages. Silk, Oregon has 113 indexed pages, whereas Top Hot Springs has has 741 pages. So the main difference is that Top Hot Springs is a worldwide hot springs directory. And perhaps just having more index pages that are all centered around the topic of hot springs gives them the edge when it comes to being referenced. So maybe ChatGPT is weighing that in its favor. Axios, I believe this is a massive, massive website. Axios has this local portion of their website for Portland. Let's just take a look at some of the keywords that they're ranking for. They're ranking for a lot of keywords with their Oregon page. So four out of their 28,000 keywords have anything to do with hot springs in Portland. So that's kind of weird, right? Obviously they're not a hot spring directory. They're not specialized in that topic and they're not even on the first page. They're ranked on the second, third, fourth page for these keywords. I think what's carrying them to be referenced is their domain rating and just their general authoritativeness. So yeah, this is sad, but it's not really that surprising to me. Now, the good thing is at the end of ChatGBT's answer, we do see them give a shout out to both Silk Oregon and Top Hot Springs. They do have the most topical relevance out of any of the websites that we've seen referenced above. So this is really cool to see and I mean, they're definitely owned by small publishers. So this is a win for these small guys for sure. So I know this was just one example, but I think what we gathered from this single example is that it's not just about the domain rating, backlinks, traffic, and keywords. And there is value in topical relevance and topical authority where you craft your entire website around a very specific niche because ultimately it did reference the two top ranking websites for Oregon Hot Springs. And just a side note, I think it would take a lot of these side-by-side -side comparisons just to really get to an actual conclusion about how LLM SEO works. So this is just scratching the surface of what I'm observing and I don't know exactly how it works. I'm just saying that right now. Now I wanna take a look at another small directory. This one's even smaller. And this one is dryicedirectory.com. It's a directory on finding dry ice. And I talked about it in my newsletter. Let's look at the Ahrefs data real quick. Here we see that it is getting 2,600 monthly visitors, 570 keywords it's ranking for with 756 backlinks. And it's not a big directory. Let's just take a look at the keywords here. So for dry ice near me, they're ranked number five, which is pretty good. But a lot of their rankings, as you can tell, they're not really high on the first page. They're at the end of the first page, maybe the middle, right? Dry ice suppliers is ranked three, but a lot of them are even touching the second page here. So let's just see if we can get ChatGPT to reference this website. I do wanna check the most common questions the same way we did with the last example, which would be where to buy dry ice near me. So I just typed in, where can I buy dry ice in LA? And I just wanna see what shows up and there's only five that populate. So that's weird because when I type dry ice into Google Maps, I see a lot more options. There's probably around 20 that I see just in the LA area. Let's try clicking on list and maybe that will do more. Okay, so yeah, there's six recommendations. I mean, this is not really that helpful as someone looking for dry ice and it just further proves that a dedicated directory, as ugly as it is, dry ice directory is useful to some degree. Of course you can use Google Maps, but not everyone's going to Google Maps, right? Some people are typing it into Google and that's why they land on this directory here. I guess I'm saying location-based directories 
I think are here to stay for a while. Maybe it's famous last words. Maybe I'm right. Who knows? Just a side note. Going back to this, where can I buy dry ice in LA? Just gave me this and it didn't really reference anything. I had to click on sources just to see. And so it's Yelp. It's a bunch of different individual businesses. And I don't see dry ice directory referenced anywhere in the sources. Now I wonder if these are just the top ranking local SEO websites. So this is North Hollywood Ice, Crystal Ice, Chicada Bros. And we can see this Reddit forum here. There's North Hollywood. There's Yelp Penguin brand. There's Crystal Ice LA. So it is pulling from the front page here. And of course, we don't see dry ice directory on the front page for LA. This makes sense, right? This isn't anything new. In a way, this is great news because as small publishers, we can just continue going for that page one ranking. And we'll probably have a pretty good chance at being referenced by ChatGBT. Another thing is that dry ice near me is a little bit confusing. When you type in dry ice near me, it's like based on your location. So position five doesn't mean your position five for dry ice in LA. I wonder if we can filter by position to see if there are any high ranking long tail keywords that we can try. So this is kind of interesting. Does Dollar General sell dry ice? There's virtually no search volume, but it's pretty low competition. Let me just type this in because they're position three here. And let's just check on Google by just typing this. Okay, so they are rank four for this query and we'll just Type that into ChatGPT as well. All right, so no mention of dryicedirectory.com. It does mention Penguin Brand Dry Ice Locator, which is a directory for finding dry ice at a grocery store. Gotta search up this website. Holy damn. This little directory page gets 14,500 monthly visits. 103,000 keywords for this one single page. All right, Dry Ice Near Me, they're rank three. Yeah, I would say this is the more dominant dry ice directory. Let's just see real quick though, if the sources mention dry ice directory. Hey, dry ice directory is one of the referenced directories here, but what are the chances someone's going to come here and click on this source and then visit the directory? The chances are pretty slim. And unless you're building in a niche where people really want to go deep, then you're probably not going to get clicks from this section here. We also see Money Pantry. So this is kind of giving me the same vibes as Axios. So this is just a general blog for what I assume are grocery stores. Okay. This page gets 127 monthly visitors and it is ranking for some keywords, but it's just leveraging the authority from the main domain, which yeah, I mean, this is much more impressive. If I own dryicedirectory.com, then I would do everything in my power to increase my rankings, right? Because Penguin Brand Dry Ice Locator, that page does have higher rankings for the same keywords, but they're not that far off. I think it was like rank three versus rank five. So they could just try and overtake Penguin Brand Dry Ice Locator. Maybe that would result in more clicks through ChatGPT. Now this was very much a learn in public kind of moment, but let me summarize the main takeaways that I found just looking at two examples. So the first thing is that there's obviously a strong tie between what's ranking on Google's front page and what is being referenced by ChatGPT. The game is in a sense not really that different. The second notable thing is that near me keywords will prioritize local SEO, which makes sense, right? That's also not new. Third observation is that ChatGPT still sucks when it comes to recommending proximity based places and locations. We saw that map that only gave us a few recommendations for dry ice vendors when in reality, Google Maps shows dozens of them. So that's a plus for location based directory builders such as myself. Fourth is topical relevance, topical authority. These things still matter. As we saw with the hot springs example, it did reference the two directories where the entire website was only talking about hot springs. So that's worth noting. The fifth one is that site authority is still a really influential factor, which means that backlinks are still a major factor. And I don't think that means having really high quality backlinks immediately gets you referenced on ChatGPT. I think it means that having high quality backlinks increases your authority. It gets you higher ranked on Google and that's what gets you referenced on ChatGPT. Now the sixth and last observation is that the sources 
that ChatGPT gives us aren't always the most helpful. I mean, we saw these really big websites that barely had anything to do with Hot Springs, yet it was referenced as a resource in a Hot Springs related query. In my book, this is another win for small directory owners because I don't think I would be very satisfied if I got Axios or Money Pantry as my source for Hot Springs or Dry Ice. I think I would go to Google still. I guess that's subjective, but in a way it's just not that helpful, which means that people may be looking elsewhere. All right, so let me know if this was interesting and I think this will be kind of an ongoing mission for me personally, where I try to understand what the heck is even this. And personally, I'd rather trust my own research and my own observations rather than just reading an article or a tweet where someone's all doom and gloom about Google, because obviously there's nuance to everything. There's a lot of smaller tests and comparisons that we can run, especially as it relates to user generated content. So yeah, thanks for watching and always appreciate the support and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.